Hey, hope you had a great week. And welcome back to Richard Bay Talk. Glad that you're here. And I'm also glad that Albert Reynoso is here. He's the producer of the podcast. Albert, let me ask you a question. Do you, yeah. um, we had the Mega Millions this week, and uh, they say that somebody won $1.3 billion. Oh, is that right? I don't oh, keep you, track of it. Oh, oh. Do you buy lottery tickets? Yes, I'm in I'm in Mega and Power every week. I buy a month's worth at a uh, three months worth at a time. Wow. But I don't keep track of it because I have an app that's just that just gives me the results of Mega and Power. And I put in my numbers and it tells me whether that drawing every week I was a winner or not. And just about every week says no. So. All right. Well, I have some earth shattering breaking news here. Uh, this is the winning lottery ticket, and it's mine. I mean, no, it's the winning lottery ticket because the one that they drew out was from a rigged machine, a Dominion machine, which, which was, which, which, you know, which was hacked by Juan Perón and Che Guevara and Fidel Castro. So that that person in Maine, they wanted to cheat me out of it. It's a rigged lottery. This is the winning lottery ticket I'm showing you here right now. Does that uh, mean that you'll start to pay me for this now that you want to pay money? I wish somebody would pay me for this. I do it because All of right. that. All right. But, you know, I think that, um, you know, we buy lottery tickets. Why? It's more for the dream than the reality. We know that it's a one in 300 million chance that you'd win this billion dollar mega uh, lottery ticket. I, I never buy them. I said, I'll start this time. I didn't even know the, the cashier said, well, run it through. Maybe you won something. And I said, what, you can win something. I didn't know you could win something other than the 1.3. She said, you could win a million dollars if you get five numbers, right? Um, and I didn't anyway. Um, we buy those lottery tickets, I think, so we can dream. It's a, it's a way of entertaining ourselves more than the actual possibility that we might win a billion dollars. What would you do with a billion dollars? It gives you a couple of days to think about all the things you might do in your life or not do. I'll bet Albert wouldn't change his life at all. Uh, probably, maybe I'm. Is that right? I I don't think I would much. I, I'm I've never been motivated by money, but there are there are things I would do, like buy my daughter a place to live on her right, own, buy right. my son a place. But for me, I don't care. As long well, as I have your friendship, I'm as wealthy. As oh, well. thank you, thank you. Well, you know, I'm the same way. I started to think about what I would do with it. And uh, most of the things I thought about were things that I would do for other people. I would, I would get a home for Magda and Kyle and, and set up a, a fund for him so that, uh, you know, in the future, he'll be able to sustain himself. I would also buy a luxury Manhattan condo like I used to have right next to Central Park. Um, and then I might travel. But other than that, I don't even know what but you those do. are things for you. You said you didn't want it for yourself, but yeah. that's for yourself. I know, of course. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I didn't I hear any. I didn't hear any pay for me. Where's my pay? Again. <laughs> All right, Albert, stop it. <laughs> anyway. That's why we buy the tickets, so we could dream about all the things we might possibly do. Now, with Republicans, it's the opposite. Um, the the mega millions is selling you a dream. The Republicans are selling you a bad dream, a nightmare, like the one we saw this week. Oh, the left and uh, this deep state government, they're taking away your uh, uh, gas stoves. Oh my God, how could they do this? No, uh, one, um, one guy who never misses an opportunity, uh, you know, for a stunt, he's stunting his way all the way to the White House, is Ron DeSantis. And of course, he didn't miss this opportunity. Here he is. Be here. And, you know, I, I just, before we get into the meat of, of what we're doing, I just want to you know, make it clear to everybody, you know, when we say uh, don't tread on Florida or let us alone, uh, we mean that, including on your gas stoves. You're not taking our gas stoves away from us. That is your choice. 
And I know many people who cook a lot do not want to part with their gas stoves. And so we're going to stand up for that. Nobody's taking away your gas stoves. One guy on a consumer protection agency said um, that gas stoves are dangerous and that sometime in the future they might have to look at restricting them. Um, but the head of the whole agency said there are no plans to take away your gas stoves. Regardless, Ron DeSantis has turned this into a marketing opportunity. He's selling these aprons on his political website. Secure yours now. Don't tread on Florida uh, with a picture of a gas stove. Um, one Republican congressman, uh, Ronnie Jackson of Texas said, they'll have to pry my gas stove from my cold hands, echoing uh, the words of Charlton Heston about guns. But uh, what I would say, could we see that picture? They will have to pry my gas stove away from my cold head sticking in the oven. I mean, just think about it. Um, you know, Sylvia Plath, how would she have, you can't stick your head in an electric, I guess you could stick it in an electric oven and you'd fry your head, but you wouldn't die of gas. And for those of you who are smokers, if there are any left, how how do you light a cigarette on a on an electric stove? How do you light a joint? Is, aren't there times you go, where's the lighter? I can't find it. I want to light the joint. Can't do it on an electric stove. I guess you could stick it on there and hope that it catches, but it's 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 very difficult. Um, so uh, nobody's taking away your gas stoves, and uh, so we're. Uh, all of us remember Obamacare and the the death panels and how many people were going to die and all these every day there was an army of people on Fox News. Oh, if we have Obamacare, I'm going to lose my doctor. I'm going to die. What happened to all those people? The Republicans are great at fabricating great crisis and victimhood and uh, potential government infringement that doesn't really exist. But uh, what are they doing in Congress now? Well, they're doing a lot of theater. And the big story of the week, the biggest story of all, was um, the finding that Joe Biden had classified documents both in the Biden Center at Penn University and uh, in his home. There was none at the beach house, surprisingly. And the Republicans have just gone to town on this. Look what they did to Trump! How could they do this? You know, why don't they have the FBI raid Joe Biden's house? Now, let me explain. Joe Biden has made some big mistakes. The biggest mistake, I think, was in a press conference when he described how the documents were in a locked garage next to his Porsche. I mean, that was not only clumsy, it was it was arrogant very stupid thing to say. The other mistake they made was waiting so long. Uh, but I don't believe they should have released the information to the public. They immediately went to the Department of Justice and the archives and had them come and pick up whatever was classified. Unlike Trump, who stalled for a year, who who had his lawyers lie um, you know, about what he was possessing in terms of classified documents, they were immediately in contact and complied with uh, complied with the uh, with the authorities. Um, but uh, I can see why you wouldn't want to release it on November second. This would be like uh, finding Hillary Clinton's emails on Uma. Aberdeen's laptop, which was this story right before the election. And it obliterated everything else about the election. And then, of course, it turned out to be a big nothing, just duplicates of things they already had. And this, the, the, the same way. But what they should have done is released, they found a second batch around Christmas. They should have re released the information to the public at Christmas time. It's dead air. Nobody cares about the news at Christmas. And, um, you know, they should have released it earlier. And that's what people are um, complaining about. Now, the Republicans um, are setting up a House Oversight um, Committee that will look into this Biden situation, but not the Trump situation. Now, Jake 
Trapper, Chap, Tapper tried to make the chairman of this committee, um, James uh, Comer from Kentucky, uh, tried to make him understand the difference between obstruction of justice mens rea, meaning there's an intent to do something, and an inadvertent mistake and full cooperation and coordination with the proper authorities. He tried to make this guy understand that. And he tried to ask him over and over again, if you're going to uh, investigate Biden, why aren't you going to investigate Trump? Uh, But he failed. Um, Listen, we want to know uh, the visitor logs to the residents. We want to know who had access uh, to the Biden Center for Diplomacy, because uh, this is the same uh, type of uh, investigation that the Democrats were so outraged and, and launched and demanded happen to, to President Trump. Former President Trump is under an investigation for his own classified documents. There are about 20 in the case of Biden. For Trump, there are, about, there are more than 300 classified documents in Mar-a-Lago. A big difference here... Uh, just on the facts, Trump did not fully comply with the subpoena. His lawyers falsely told investigators that they turned everything in. Um, take a listen to what you told CNN about the situation last November. I don't know much about that. That's not something that uh, we've requested information just to see what was going on, because I don't know what documents were at mar a Largo. Uh, so, you know, that's something we're just waiting to see what comes out on that. But is it fair to say that investigation won't be a priority? That will not be a priority. So what do you say to viewers who don't understand why President Biden's documents seem like a big priority for you, but President Trump, who took hundreds more documents, did not comply with the subpoena, did not reach out to the National Archives or the Justice Department to say, hey, we found these documents. It's not a priority. Do you only care about classified documents being mishandled when Democrats do the mishandling? At the end of the day, my biggest concern isn't the classified documents, to be honest with you. My concern is how there's such a discrepancy in how former President Trump was treated by raiding Mar-a-Lago, by getting the security cameras. What my understanding is, and again, we don't know because we haven't been briefed, was that President Trump was arguing with National Archives over what is classified and what is not. As we've heard the president say before, the president has the authority to declassify documents. Now, the question is whether or not the president actually declassified the documents. The vice president does not have the authority to declassify. Actually, the vice, the vice president so, does you know, have. There's a big do, difference. The here. vice president does. I'm that, not saying we that, don't, we, we, the vice we, president we, does we have that authority. That. That. Well, we disagree that the vice president does. Well, you can disagree, but there's an Obama executive order from 2009 that allowed the vice president to, to classify and declassify um, documents as well as uh, agency heads. Uh, so you, you were wrong, Mr. Comer. Um, listen, what you understand is there's a difference between what Sandy Berger did. Sandy Berger was uh, an official in the Clinton White House and he went to the National Archives and he took something out and he stuffed it down his pants and then walked out. Unfortunately for him, there are cameras there and they caught him actually taking the document and sticking it into his underwear. Now, um, he was indicted and he had to pay a fine. He lost his law license. Uh, He lost his security clearance. He was put on probation. I mean, so that's one instance. You know why? Because the intent was clear. With Hillary Clinton, the intent was undemonstrable. And that's what James Comey said. And that's why he didn't bring any charges. You wouldn't be able to demonstrate Uh, any kind of nefarious or criminal intent in her mind when she did the things that she did. So there's a big difference here between these two things. But uh, most people won't stick around, uh, you know, to to look at those differences. Um, But uh, we got some inclination as to what they're going to do with all this this week and it wasn't really officially a part of the committee yet but the headlines on conservative media said hunter biden was at the clinton house oh my god a father and his son were in the same house oh my god and then they're linking that to the fact that the university of pennsylvania 
gets a donation from China. And they're saying that donation funded the Biden Center. And there's no evidence of that at all. And of course, there is uh, the uh, Hunter Biden uh, business deal that he had with China. And there, so this whole thing is going to be about uh, Chinese influence and linking it to these documents as if the Chinese were coming over to Bill Clinton, uh, to uh, Joe Biden's house and going into, let me see that Porsche you have, uh, uh, President Biden. Oh, look at these boxes. Can I just look? Come on. This is going to be, at one point in that interview, James Comer said, can't you see the pattern? <laughs> it sounded like all of those people who see a pattern um, in the uh, in the voting from the uh, 2020 election. It was just as crazy as all that. So the other thing they did this week uh, was to uh, vote against funding the IRS, which was part of the... Um, the fight inflation package uh, that was passed by the Democratic Congress. It's um, it's eighty billion dollars uh, to hire eighty seven thousand workers uh, over the next uh, ten years, I believe it is. But the IRS is in incredibly underfunded. The IRS is going to lose about five thousand agents or employees, I guess it is, over the next uh, eight years. Now, there's a backlog at the IRS. All their IT is, is outdated. Um, but the Republicans, once again, have created their bad dream that there are going to be 87,000 jackbooted well-armed IRS agents kicking down your door, coming to your house. It's entirely untrue. There aren't even 87,000 field agents being hired. I mean, uh, you know, about half this money is going for clerical workers and other employees, IT specialists, et, et cetera. So that, that's another made-up bad dream. And they did vote to pull back the funding to modernize the IRS. And they started sending out messages. Oh, we, we defunded the IRS. No, you didn't. First of all, anything you pass is purely performative because it would never pass the Senate. And even if it passed the Senate, the president, Joe Biden, has said, I would veto any defunding of uh, IRS offices. Now, here's one a Republican representative from Florida talking about this. Uh, she is uh, from Florida. Uh, she's a former beauty pageant winner. Um, and here's what she had to say about we it. We need to have those discussions. But more or less what I've heard in some of these negotiations is we're talking about programs that aren't going to the necessities that we, the American people, need, i.e. protections. I'm talking about some of these woke ideology, these funded programs, and, for example, these... Uh, these salaries for these additional weaponized 87,000 IRS agents, which you saw we tried to pass, yet the Senate and even the Biden White House is pushing back on, sir, I say taxation is theft, and I don't want any more IRS agents than you probably do. Uh, taxation is theft. So these people are stealing your money. Oliver Wendell Holmes, who is an estimable Supreme Court justice uh, in, from the past, said taxes are what we pay as the price for civilization. We agree as a country, as a people, to pay our taxes so we can have a civil and organized and better, efficient society. That's what happens. I remember, I remember in, uh, what was it, 1996 or five, I actually paid $480,000 in taxes. And that was because of the federal tax, the New York City tax, the New York State tax. And man, I was overjoyed because I had half a million left over. It didn't, it didn't really bother me at all. And at the IRS in 2010, let me get this right. 
more than 21% of tax returns for those people who made more than $10 million, 21% of them were audited. In 2019, only 3.9% were audited. Oh yeah, this is a, a great gift to the wealthy that they already gave them in that tax cut, uh, the Trump tax cut. Um, now, Albert, you've never been audited. I think you told me that, right? I have not. Not yet. Okay. All right. I was audited once when huh. I was on WABC radio. And man, I went crazy in the weeks before. I looked at my diary. I tried to go through my boxes. I didn't find any classified documents, but I found receipts and everything else. And uh, I went down to the IRS office and I'm sitting on a bench outside and I'm going, oh, please. let." I mean, my accountant said to me, hey, your taxes aren't anything out of the ordinary. You have nothing to be uh, concerned about. Uh, but I'm sitting there on the bench and this 24-year-old kid comes out and he's the agent and he goes, oh, my God. He goes, I saw your name, but I didn't think it would be you. You're Richard Bay. Oh, my God. I love you. I love your show. And I went, oh, thank you, God. And I went inside. And as we walked to his cubicle, I passed. Um, he was a, an Orthodox Jewish uh, employee of the IRS. And he goes, yeah, I hear you on ABC all the time. You're a liberal. I could tell he didn't like me very much. But during the audit, I could say, hey, you know, I sing songs on the show, and that's why I have singing lessons. Tell him, don't I sing songs? And the guy would go begrudgingly. Yes, he sings songs. And I said, and I have a segment called Dick and Dad Go to the Movies. And I go to the movies with my father, and we review movies. And that's why movies are deductible. Don't I do that? And he would go. Yes, he goes to the movies with his father. And I walked out and there was nothing to it. It was over. Nothing happened afterwards. So that was, um, you know, that was my experience with an audit. And they also passed some bill about uh, abortion and about uh, if a baby is born after an abortion, uh, another bill that won't go anywhere. Uh, uh, and there's already a bill that was passed under George Bush that was called the Born Alive Infants Protection Act of 2002. And uh, between 2003 and 2014, um, that's... Uh, 11 years, there were 143 infants born after an attempted induced abortion. Uh, most of them lived uh, for minutes or an hour or so because they had anomalies. Uh, so the one, wonderful bill, and it's going nowhere. And it's illegal, and it's always been illegal in every state in the union uh, to kill an infant that's born alive. Ridiculous. So, uh, but they, they performed, you know, for their base. And this investigation will be performing as well with uh, James Comer and the other, um, Jim Jordan. We're going to have two years of political theater. Oh, you know what I left out? You know what these investigations are really about? Albert, can you get back to that uh, McCarthy Clinton clip? And Kevin McCarthy saying the committee investigating Benghazi and Clinton's emails was created to destroy her candidacy. Everybody thought Hillary Clinton was unbeatable, right? But we put together a Benghazi special committee. What are her numbers today? Go ahead. That was one of my <laughs> questions. Go right ahead. Well, I knew you'd want to ask it. What you're going to see is a conservative speaker that takes a conservative Congress that puts a strategy to fight and win. And let me give you one example. Everybody thought Hillary Clinton was unbeatable, right? But we put together a Benghazi special committee, a select committee. What are her numbers today? Her numbers are dropping. All right. And that's the real reason for these, uh, you know, oversight investigations. Um, Joe Biden, it looks like, is going to run for president again, and they're going to have his numbers dropping, and they're going to, they're going to, talk about China all over the place, even though it was Trump who had uh, uh, 
a bank account in a Chinese bank, even while he was president, even though while he was negotiating with the Chinese for a trade deal on which they reneged on most of it. And he got taken to the, the United States actually got taken to the cleaners and China gave his daughter uh, 15 or 16 um, uh, trademarks for her uh, merchandise, even though that happened then, even though Trump said famously, I love she. And it, it wasn't, he wasn't talking about Milani. He was talking about XI she. <laughs> I mean, even though all of that, you know, we're going to hear about China and Biden and Hunter Biden and all of that. And it's going to be, uh, remember um, in the 2016 campaign, uh, Schweitzer uh, came out with that book, Clinton Cash, and it was just a, a, a big amount of nothing. Just, you know, can't you see the pattern? Well, pretty soon uh, we're going to see uh, Biden booty come out in the conservative press. Now, another big bugaboo uh, was something uh, that occurred while I was doing the Richard Bay show. Um, you got trouble, my friends, right here in River City, and it was talk shows, talk shows that were destroying American youth. And now it's uh, drag queens are grooming children. Back then it was talk shows or grooming children to be sex fiends and criminals. And of course, that was a time when you had the Richard Bay show. We were the first out of it. We were before Jerry Springer to do this kind of crazy, funny talk show. But you had the Richard Bay show and you had Jerry Springer and Maury and Montel and Sally Jesse Raphael and uh, Charles Lopez and Tempest Bledsoe and Danny Bonaducci. Excuse me if I've left Carney and Ricky Lake. And Joe Lieberman, who was a U.S. senator, printed a list of all these objectionable talk, talk shows, along with um, uh, Bill Bennett, who had been the secretary of uh, education under Ronald Reagan. They were joined by Sam Nunn, and they were asking station heads to drop these shows. They were going to corporate heads and telling them to stop uh, producing these shows. They were going to advertisers. I had advertisers say to me, I love your show, but I can't advertise it on it. You're on the, the uh, Joe Lieberman shit list. So here's Joe Lieberman talking about talk shows. Back a number of experts in child psychology, not to mention millions of American parents are concluding that the accumulation of these dangerous messages is contributing to the increasingly common and disturbing pattern of acts being committed that are by children that are anything but childlike, such as the 13-year-old boy in Daly City, California, who apparently and allegedly shot at his middle school principal after being suspended from school. And in another sense, the 13-year-old boy and the 12-year-old girl from Reston, Virginia, who've been convicted of running a prostitution ring in their middle school. These incidents say to us that something is going deeply wrong in our culture and they lead us to ask how many more atrocities like them are, go are we going to tolerate before we have an honest conversation about the role that the media plays in shaping the attitudes and behaviors of America's youth. Howard Stern's one-man sewage system to network television. This uh, parade of perversity and real or forced violence that goes on uh, every day. Well, all right. Well, Jerry Springer just went off. Maybe it was like 30 years he was on the air. Uh, I, I, there was a six-year-old kid who shot his teacher. Uh, why don't we blame that on the drag queens? Anyway, I had a response to all that, but I put it into song and I performed it on the Richard Bay Show. If you listen cl closely, you'll hear me refer to Bill Bennett and congressmen who were trying to get the show taken off the air. I hope you enjoy it. Everywhere I go, it's the Richard Bay Show. People know the games we're playing. Get up high in the face, run a stupid race, say Bay's phrase and I'm paying. There will come a day, there won't be any Dick Bay. Don't worry about Dick. When the end comes, I know you'll be watching this show. Late at night on Nick, cause I... A 
young little mama. Turn off your V-chip and take a chance on me. I'm not so bad. Bop, bop, bop. That now that Congress is cutting the funding for PBS, the Richard Bay Show is the only place to find intelligent broadcasting on TV. Yeah. Ah, the energy and enthusiasm of youth. <laughs> the V chip. I referenced the V chip. Do you remember the V chip? The V chip was something useless. Could... What? Do you remember oh. that? That's what this was all about. Yeah, the it's a V chip. Ratings. Oh, please. Anyway, that's about it for today. I, I hope you enjoyed the show. I, I hope you learned some things maybe you didn't know. And uh, I, I appreciate so much that you watch each week. Uh, so please share it with your friends. Uh, understand that we are also on audio a podcast on almost any uh, platform that you might be aware of. And uh, I hope you'll continue to subscribe, recommend this, and share it on Facebook. And as always, all my best. Take care.